Okay, so we are going to pick back up today where we left off last time. We are looking in Psalm 1, and we are moving through Psalm 1 verse 5 today. Um, I am again going to pull a lot of material from the Psalm 1 daily devotion, 30-day uh, journey of choice. And so I just... I love the way that the Lord wrote this content, and so I'm going to pull a lot from it if you want to follow along. If you have one, if you don't, that's fine, but if you want one, you can just let me know. They're available on the website, or you can drop me um, a message, and I'll be happy to get one to you. But it is, And this is a 30-day devotion going through uh, Psalm 1. But if you're going to follow along and take notes, we are into day 19. That's where I'm going to be pulling a lot of this material from. And uh, again, I just love the way the Lord worded this, and so I'm gonna <laughs> gonna use what He's already given. So the verse that we're looking at is Psalm 1 5, and it says, "Therefore the wicked, and we talked about yesterday, those disobedient and choosing to live without God, shall not stand justified in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, those who are upright and in right standing with God." So back at the beginning. When Adam and Eve chose to listen to the voice of Satan, the deceiver, they bowed their knee to a new master. In the garden, God was mankind's source of identity, provision, and purpose. There was no death. Life eternal with God was part of his original intent. A man was placed in the garden with every need met in abundance. His responsibility was to steward it take care of what God had given him, and to see that the garden grew. God communed with them, and they were intimately connected with him. Sin, disobedience, iniquity put a chasm between God and man. You see, God is holy and cannot fellowship with sin. That is why Jesus came. He came, lived a perfect life, conquering temptation, sin, and death in order that you and I could be reconciled to God, our true Father. To reconcile means to restore friendly relations between, to make compatible, and to restore harmony. Harmony is a pleasing arrangement of parts. If you think about the roles um, or the parts as our roles, Jesus came to put our roles back into their proper position. I'm getting out and saying it. This is not written here. But Jesus came to put our roles back into the proper position, the proper order, um, where they were intended to be. God is our Lord, our source, and us, his children, the object of his affections. Jesus gave himself as our payment for failure and our sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin." So that we could be made right with God through Christ. That is good news. That Jesus, so willing he was and loved us so much that he became our sin. He was the offering and payment for our wrongdoings and our shortcomings so that we could be made right with the Father and be in right standing with him. In Christ, we find forgiveness for sin and reconciliation with God. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we who have submitted to him as Lord and Savior enjoy friendly relations with God. He is not angry with us any longer. Our debt has been paid. And that's what we talked about um, yesterday, I believe, and that was our submitting ourselves to the to Jesus Christ as Lord in that as husbands and wives when we come together in covenant when we join together our lives are lived differently we don't live like we used to live well we can't there's another person we have to think about um, 2 Corinthians 5 19 it says it was God personally present in Christ reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself not counting up and holding against men their trespasses, but canceling them and committing to us the message of reconciliation and restoration to favor. See, Jesus reconciled us back to the Father, restoring friendly relations between us. And the word translated message here in the Greek also means ministry or service. So it is our service back to God that by our words and our actions, we might bring others to him. Our lives should be attractive and draw others into harmony with him. 
And so I'm so thankful that he gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. And Lord, our prayer today is that may our lives draw people to you. May the way in which we live our lives, may may our love for you and you love your love for us shine through us, God. And may we be ministers of reconciliation in Jesus' name. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye. Hello?